Thank you for joining us today. On our program, we are blessed to have the distinguished individual, Dr. Todd Mecaria, come onto our show and share some interesting viewpoints and some successes that they've had in the Bay Area in California. For those of you who are not acquainted with this gentleman, he, is very he has a very impressive background. He is a psychiatrist in private practice in Oakland at Berkeley. He is a gentleman who introduced the first methadone maintenance program in Alameda County. That's right. And he's also a member of the California Medical Association. He's uh, certified by the American Society of Addiction, and Addiction Medicine, and the California Society of Addiction Medicine is a qualified medical review officer, right? That's right. Kind of blew that. Uh, he's, uh, he's also the co-author of a very imp impressive landmark bill that has happened in San Francisco called uh, Proposition P. Uh, this man's background goes beyond that. But uh, for, for now, that basically covers the things that we're going to be approaching. Now, Proposition P, a lot of people uh, have become aware of that through the press and through media coverage. And I know people becoming aware of your background recognizes that you have a lot going for you intellectually. And so that when you make a comment that we should pay attention to hemp as a medical resource for the curing of pain and relieving of pain and other diseases, it comes with a lot of impact. Well, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, one of the problems that we had, uh, well, we've been having problems for many years of uh, getting access to uh, medicinal cannabis. And once upon a time, um, I was in charge of uh, marijuana research for the National Institute of Mental Health in uh, Chevy Chase. This is back in 1967, but okay. since that time, um, there's been a minimal amount of progress in getting cannabis available for medicinal use. Mm -hmm. Only recently has there been some compassionate uh, access and only recently have there been some grudging admissions by the scientific and medical establishment that cannabis in fact had therapeutic uh, efficacy. Okay. And uh, I feel very bitter about this because uh, I know it to be a cover-up since uh, before marijuana was taken away from availability by the 1937 Tax Act, medicinal cannabis also became unavailable, deleted from the 1941 formulary and pharmacopoeia. Now why did that go hand in hand like that? Because it was part of this uh, uh, so-called send them a signal school of uh, propaganda and disinformation that the police uh, had to maintain in order to continue the fictionalized uh, killer weed or okay. uh, part of reefer madness and so saying that that cannabis had medical or medicinal utility would have run contrary to their uh, fiction that they uh, needed to maintain in order to uh, continue credibility and not having people question why uh, marijuana was in fact prohibited. Now that's the only uh, plant substance drug, which is not really a drug, it's an herb, that's been treated like that. I mean, ha we have opium that's still available, etc., for me medicinal purposes, etc., don't we, and other forms of... That's right, even cocaine. But mm -hmm. uh, because of the several factors, the growing populari popularity and the promotion of synthetic uh, drugs uh, by the pharmaceutical manufacturers uh, that started uh, in the 1890s and went on uh, through the 1900s uh, and has escalated ever since with uh, uh, new and better allegedly uh, synthetic substances no money could be made from any patents mm -hmm. and they weren't interested in uh, promoting uh, the use of cannabis although uh, Eli Lilly and Park Davis uh, uh, maintained a farm for uh, developing uh, pharmaceutical strains and uh, pharmaceutical strength plants uh, up until 1937. Hmm. And then they're just now disregarding all of that past, past evidence until now you're bringing it to light? Well, yes, and uh, that's, uh, well, it's very much like living, uh, at least in the medical world, uh, with the depiction of the planet of the apes and what happened to medicine after uh, they uh, wanted to get rid of all these human kinds of advances in technology and they re reverted to uh, some form of medicine that resembled something that happened in the Middle Ages or worse. 
Okay, well now, see, people are able to recognize that hemp can be made into paper fiber and fuel, but when it comes to the idea of it being medicine, outside of smoking it, as far as relaxing, taking care of stress, etc., it's hard for them to imagine in what areas hemp can actually be utilized for. Now, you say that it helps in AIDS, as an example? Well, okay, back to this issue of censorship and it's being swept under the rug. Okay. Um, and the importance of bringing this back to consciousness and bringing it back to the awareness of the medical community as far as a therapeutic agent. And that's why the text of the uh, uh, initiative or the proposition in San Francisco that I co-authored uh, contained the term restore. Could you take a moment and read it to our audience? Yes. I'd appreciate that. Recommendation to amend the Health and Safety Code of California. One, the people of the city and county of San Francisco recommend that the state of California and the California Medical Association restore hemp medical preparations to the list of available medicines in California. Licensed physicians shall not be penalized for or restricted from prescribing hemp preparations for medical purposes to any patient. Definition. The term hemp medical preparations means all products made from hemp, cannabis, or marijuana in all forms that are designed, intended, or used for human consumption for the treatment of any disease, the relief of pain, or for any healing purpose, including the relief of asthma, glaucoma, arthritis, anorexia, migraine, multiple sclerosis, epilepsy, nausea, stress, for use as an antibiotic, and antiemetic, or as any healing agent, or as an adjunct to any medical procedure for the treatment of cancer, HIV infection, or, or any other medical procedure or herbal treatment. Yes. Now that is a very broad uh, a, a definition of, uh, of medicine or medical or medicinal applications. It is. But the definition of uh, uh, hemp uh, medical preparations is well documented in previous uh, 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 things like the U.S. Pharmacopeia, and that, in fact, uh, all the definitions are in place ready to go for medicinal use of crude cannabis products to be restored Excellent. to the formulary. Excellent. And so um, we're in this wonderful uh, uh, post-passage uh, 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 euphoria. Uh, uh, Dennis Perone, the, uh, um, the spark plug behind this, um, has appointed me uh, the medical coordinator for the Committee for Compassionate Use, his organization, to get this on the ballot. And then now we're trying to figure out, what do we do now? All of a sudden, we've become successes after all these many years having been failures and looked upon as outcasts, deviants, nuts, uh, irresponsible, uh, dope-smoking hippies, and other kinds of negative stereotypes that we've been stuck with well, which is all part of the suppression uh, 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 campaign to um, uh, keep uh, a cannabis, marijuana, or hemp uh, illegal. I see a lot of that has to do with people of your stature being willing to come forth into the public light and make these statements because, you know, you leave yourself wide open. I'm certain you realize that for a variety of attacks, whether it be from government agencies or private industry. Yes, because uh, it's really part of... Uh, a campaign to uh, maintain these collective uh, uh, fictions in order to uh, prop up these uh, flawed policies that they need to attempt to uh, uh, discredit or tarnish or kill the messenger somehow so as to not uh, be made uh, uh, to confront the actual facts and deal on a level, level playing field with what is in fact happening. When we the, come back I'd like to be able to go a little bit farther as to how uh, the next step a proper a pre proposition P. Preparation P. Preparation P. It <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, helps take care of a pain. Yes, it does. Uh, it's going to be implemented in the direction that it's going to have to go before it becomes completely successful. Uh, we'll be right back after this. We're talking today with Dr. Todd Mecaria, and we are learning some of the benefits, of course, from the medical uses of the hemp plant, but now we also have some challenges against uh, us still that we've got to overcome. 
you have encumbered the first leg of the journey. You've just the first battle, basically. You've got it legal in a city. But now I understand from talking to Dennis Perone and others, you still have to encumber the state laws and the federal laws. Now, how do you plan on, on taking on getting this into the next phase? I've already worked on uh, attempting to um, surf on this event wave and have taken a running start uh, by contacting uh, the California Medical Association with regard to the possible passage of this uh, before uh, it actually passed. Okay. And so um, I'm asking them to become involved with uh, helping to uh, implement, implement the intent of the uh, proposition which specifies um, that the people of the city and county of San Francisco recommend that the state of California and the California Medical Association restore hemp preparations, etc. How do you think that will be met? With trepidation by the California Medical Association, but it's been put on a fast track to be reviewed by their scientific council. Um, and I spoke with the president of the uh, CMA, uh, Dr. Howard Lang, who uh, impresses me as a forthright, uh, courageous person. Uh, but I don't know how he feels on the issue. He was vaguely aware of having seen it uh, across his desk, but then passed it on to the appropriate staffers down at their headquarters office in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. And uh, they uh, were aware that it had passed, but uh, were not aware of how the California Medical Association was uh, obliged to be involved. Okay. Um, there isn't any uh, kind of way we can force the CMA to be involved in, in taking a stand, uh, yay or nay. But uh, if they do support this, uh, their uh, the options of activity are to uh, uh, publicize it amongst their physicians and also start working in Sacramento for uh, legislation to uh, make this possible and, of course, statewide. Okay. Now, is there a chance that a, a federal agent or a state agent would still take action in the city of, of San Francisco and begin arresting people when they are growing marijuana hemp? Well, this is always possible, uh, but we have this unique situation in San Francisco where the uh, uh, district attorney has uh, assured us that he will not prosecute any cases for six plants or less that okay. are growing for medicinal purposes if the person demonstrates uh, that, they, they are, uh, that they have medicinal intent or documentation. Gatewood Galbraith once made the comment on a show of ours that if he were able to re-legalize hemp in Kentucky, all the tourists would come in, he'd fill up all the hotels. Uh, when I spoke with Dennis Perone, he made comment that now that this has happened in the medical field, a variety of organizations from muscular cirrhosis, et cetera, are wanting to open up foundations and offices, et cetera, in the San Francisco, i.e. Bay Area. Uh, do you foresee that happening? And if so, is that going to make the movement stronger? Or? I hadn't thought of that uh, uh, eventuality necessarily, but I uh, would uh, welcome that because it would, uh, with what we have in mind, help everybody, including the sufferers uh, that were in need. Because uh, now that we have the de facto decriminalization, even though the state attorney general is a right-wing uh, 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 individual that would, will probably oppose this, um, and ironically, he was the opponent to the DA who lost the race for the state attorney general to him, so there won't be any love lost between them. Um, theoretically, uh, the uh, state attorney general could send state police and state narcotics agents uh, to uh, go and do this kind of enforcement, uh, but it would be uh, a difficult and outside of the, his area of uh, uh, usual responsibilities. So and, you, don't, uh, you don't see an attack like they had in Humboldt County? Well, I think that in San Francisco where you have a, a, an uncooperative uh, local DA with uh, the state laws, you have uh, the, the mayor and the uh, public health establishment on your side. Uh, and as soon as uh, we get back to San Francisco, Dennis and I have a meeting with the uh, head of the uh, San Francisco Health Department that uh, we will start uh, moving forward and making something happen de facto that would be uh, politically suicidal to, uh, uh, to be punitive and uh, to attempt to stop by either federal or state intervention, uh, that theoretically they could, but uh, to target people who uh, uh, are compassionately using cannabis, um, this especially in an election year, would not look too good uh, with regard to Washington, the uh, 
state of unreality inside the Beltway that uh, doesn't really have any uh, substantive health policy. And to do something negative like this would be, uh, I would say, uh, not good uh, politics, but back to trying to implement the intent of this. We are going to uh, be presenting to the uh, state or the, uh, the county uh, health uh, person um, a, a draft of a questionnaire in a form that we will have uh, distributed uh, by the health department and publicized by them to the uh, physicians in, in San Francisco okay. that we are starting a research project to okay. determine the impact of this in terms of uh, the first way of accurately assessing actual hazards and benefits of cannabis products. Okay. That will involve uh, visits by the uh, uh, the users to their uh, family physician, or if they don't have one, uh, find one. Because uh, to get a prescription for uh, uh, using cannabis, uh, they'd have to have the signature of a, uh, a prescribing physician, mm -hmm. because it mandates that we're not going to be punished uh, for prescribing. And then, should the police come and investigate a uh, growing situation in a window box or something of that nature, patio, uh, that the person would uh, furnish proof that this was uh, for yeah. medicinal purposes and they would be functionally sheltered and decriminalized for their uh, compassionate access to cannabis. Okay. Now as a quid pro quo we ask that they give us certain facts with regard to their uh, the use for what for what ailment and we have all these uh, conditions listed here and this will be yeah. part of the form that uh, we'll ask the uh, uh, patient to, to a complete uh, and a physician also. Now I know one thing that the taxpayers from the Bay Area would be concerned about um, is when the Berlin Wall came down, mm -hmm. all the people came rushing out and uh, there was an overflow into a new city and not enough to take care of. When this wall comes bursting down in San Francisco, you're going to have people from Miami, New York, everywhere coming into San Francisco needing this medicine to relieve themselves from AIDS, glaucoma, etc., well, etc. Cetera, et cetera and there's going to be an enormous amount, it appears, of people seeking your help. How are you going to prepare to take care of that? I think the uh, uh, San Francisco uh, physicians can respond to that challenge and that uh, they can provide them with good medicine and also with uh, uh, frankness with regard to their uh, substance use patterns and not have to be hypocritical or fearful that anything will be uh, uh, happening to them so that they're not going to turn down the business. and. Uh, we're talking about people uh, publicizing to the medical community that this is what happened and this is uh, what the uh, public health department is doing to try to help implement it. Um, one of the things we're going to ask for is some uh, office space in the uh, public health department, but we'll pay for it. Okay. And we're then going to start soliciting uh, contributions or money to uh, implement this research project. Another thing that we're going to ask the public health department to do is to monitor the purity, quality, and strength mm. and uh, do chemical analyses on the hemp uh, specimens that will be submitted by uh, users because they would like to know about uh, uh, different uh, issues of purity. For example, uh, fungi uh, and molds. This is really a critical issue for the uh, AIDS patients because those that have uh, com compromised immunologic systems and problems with recurrent pneumonia to have uh, uh, sources of uh, mold or fungi come in uh, courtesy of the, uh, the leaf would be uh, not good for their health probably. Okay. And so we have to study the uh, uh, level of occurrences of these kinds of contaminants, molds, fungi, possibly uh, somebody might have something in their soil they didn't know about that would get into there like a heavy metal. And, and that the uh, essentially that the out. health uh, department's laboratory would be a pro would be protecting the health uh, of uh, the citizens of San, of San Francisco for drug purity with regard to cannabis, plus providing us a source of information for other phases of research, which will be structure activity relationships, and uh, a variety uh, strain, other kinds of botanical or, or uh, 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 species uh, kinds of uh, uh, different differences uh, or growth techniques will also uh, start uh, coming online with regard to issues of uh, what are good medicines uh, what are undesirable effects 
and we'll start generating new research right. and, and new new approaches to problems. That's right, and a population which uh, will give us this information in ex exchange for being protected. Sounds excellent. And this is the kind of uh, uh, thing that I'm quite excited about. Uh, I think that uh, we are sending the right signal to uh, the Beltway back here. And we need to do so still. And I think that uh, this kind of initiative will help uh, uh, demystify because it will involve the medical community in learning what is real and what is uh, hysteria so that uh, more legitimate information will come from this. And I'm asking to be uh, appointed a principal investigator for this research effort. I'm sure we'd so love as to, to do coordinate that. it. And we've also enjoyed having you on our show. We really have to go at this point, but we'd like to have you come back soon. Next time you get a chance to be on the show, would you please? Certainly will. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for tuning in to our program. We're doing what we can to bring in the information to you as quickly as we, as we come across it. Until we're in touch again, keep happy, keep strong, keep wise.